Footnotes from the Life Application Study Bible. Although no one knows exactly what this temple looked like, it must have been beautiful. Herod had helped the Jews remodel and beautify it, no doubt to stay on friendly terms with his subjects. Next to the inner temple, where the sacred objects were kept and the sacrifices offered, there was a large area called the Court of the Gentiles, where the money changers and merchants had their booths. Outside these courts were long porches. Solomon's colonnade was 1,562 feet long. The royal colonnade was decorated with 160 columns, stretching along its 921-foot length. Gazing at this glorious and massive structure, the disciples found Jesus' words about its destruction difficult to believe, but the temple was indeed destroyed only 40 years later, when the Romans sacked Jerusalem in AD 70. Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the very place where the prophet Zechariah had predicted that the Messiah would stand when he came to establish his kingdom. This was a fitting place for the disciples to ask Jesus when he would come in power and what they could expect then. Jesus' reply emphasized the events that would take place before the end of the world. He pointed out that his disciples should be less concerned with knowing the date and more concerned with being prepared, living God's way consistently, so that no matter when Jesus returned, they would be ready. The disciples asked Jesus for the sign of his coming and of the end of the world, which for them meant the day of judgment, when God would fulfill the hope of the Jews. Jesus' first response was, Don't let anyone mislead you. The fact is that whenever we look for signs, predictions, or conspiracies, we become very susceptible to being deceived. There are many false prophets around with counterfeit signs of spiritual power and authority. The only sure way to keep from being deceived is to focus on Jesus and his words. Don't look for special signs and don't spend time looking at other people. Look at Jesus. Every generation wonders if the wars they see mean the end of the world. When Jerusalem was destroyed in AD 70, it must have seemed like the end was near. World War II saw all nations at war and millions of Jews killed. Then Israel became its own nation again. Surely, these seemed like signs of the end. Today, we face threats of terrorism and nuclear devastation, but God still rules the world. Jesus told us not to panic. Wars or other catastrophic events will not be the confirming sign of his return. He will return when he decides and commands.